So maybe you've already got a Jenkins master deployed in AWS. If you haven't configured it to run slave agents yet, then you've got a ticking time bomb of a scalability issue on your hands. I mean, you could have a small Jenkins master that runs a few jobs a day, or maybe a big old Jenkins master that's churning through loads of jobs. Either way, if you want to keep scaling up your continuous integration workloads, eventually that Jenkins master is going to need a hand. Being the boss that he is, if you give Jenkins master some AWS compute resources, he'll happily start Jenkins slave agents and run jobs on there. Remember that we're in the cloud, so we have at our fingertips all the compute resources we could ever need. These days, we shouldn't have endless queues of slow-running Jenkins jobs. This means developers like you and me can get quick feedback and ultimately get our work done quicker. I'm going to show you exactly how to set all this up in AWS. The way we do this is through a Jenkins plugin that allows communication with whatever container orchestration framework we're using. The setup you'll learn today is using AWS Elastic Container Service. If you haven't used ECS before, give it a chance. It's Amazon's very own container orchestration framework that can scale up to service huge workloads. Now I'm going to make an assumption here, and that's that you already have a Jenkins master running somewhere. Sound fair? It doesn't need to be in ECS or even AWS, but it does need to have internet access to reach out to call the AWS APIs, and it does need to allow inbound calls from the Jenkins slave agents so that they can find out from their master what jobs they need to run. If you're not at this stage yet, then don't worry because I've got a video here about exactly how to set up your own production-ready Jenkins master. Go watch it now. We're now going to install the Amazon ECS Jenkins plugin, and I'm going to start off here with a fresh installation of Jenkins, which I've just set up. And you just need to go to Manage Jenkins, and then go to Manage Plugins here, and then go to Available Plugins, and you need to search for Amazon-ECS enter and you'll get two results here and the one we're interested in is the first one which is the Amazon Elastic Container Service plugin so select that plugin and then we'll hit install without restart and now this plugin has finished installing and by the way there is no reason to restart Jenkins with this plugin and just to double check this we can go back to manage Jenkins manage plugins and click on installed plugins and we can see that we do definitely have the ECS plugin installed now. Now there's a bit of configuration coming up. Okay, I'll be totally honest, there's more than that. There's a moderate amount of configuration coming up. So let's pause to understand exactly what we're going to be configuring before getting into the nitty gritty. There are two main things we're going to configure. The first one answers the question, how can we connect into AWS and where are we going to deploy stuff? Yep. AWS credentials, regions, and all that good stuff. The second type of configuration answers the question, what type of Jenkins slave agents are we going to run? Now pay attention because there's quite a lot to this. We'll have to describe how much CPU and memory to give it, depending on how intensive your job workload is. Also, what Docker image your slave agent is going to be based on. We'll be using the default one today, but in the future, you can consider writing your own to provide any specific libraries your job needs access to. What permissions is it going to have? Or in other words, what is its role? This will depend on whether your job needs to call any other AWS services. What security group will it be assigned in case you want to restrict network access? Although we will need to allow the Jenkins slave agent to call its master to figure out what jobs there are to process. How will logging be configured? And if there's any specific CloudWatch log group you want the logs to go to? Okay, so maybe you've got some answers to these, maybe not. Right now, I'm going to show you the most basic implementation with a single slave agent configuration. Then you can tweak it to your specific requirements later on. Sound good? So let's jump in and set up this plugin. And what we will do is go to Manage Jenkins. And you'll see here we've got an option Manage Nodes and Clouds. So we'll click this. And on the left here, we've got an option which is configure clouds. That's exactly what we need to do right now. And in this section, you can configure integrations with whatever cloud services that you can integrate with at this point. And because we've only got the single plugin installed, if we click on this, we've got a single option for Amazon ECS cloud. Click that. 
And now here's the configuration that I was talking about. And this first section here falls into the category of how can we connect into AWS and where are we going to deploy stuff? So things like your credentials, region, and specifically what ECS cluster you need to deploy into. And then we have an option here, which is to add ECS agent templates. And this configuration falls into the category of what type of Jenkins slave agents are we going to run? And you can actually have as many of these as you like, but in this case, we'll just be adding the single agent template. And if we just click add here, you can see that a whole load of text boxes appear with values that we may or may not need to set. Now to make your life and also my life easier, I'm going to refer to an article which I've written and I'll link to in the description that essentially has all the fields that we need to configure written out for us. And some of the fields we can leave as they are, but some of them are important to fill out and it's not necessarily straightforward to know which is which. So we're gonna be using this table here to fill out exactly what fields we need to fill out. And we'll also be jumping into the AWS console where I'll need to reference specific resources and copy their values into the configuration here. And we're gonna start off really straightforward by configuring the name of our ECS cloud and I'm just gonna call it ECS Cloud. And in terms of the credentials, well, because my Jenkins instance is already deployed into ECS, it's actually running as an ECS task. It has an IAM role assigned to it, which means that I don't need to configure AWS credentials because it already picks up the role of the ECS task. If you were running your Jenkins master outside of AWS, then this is something that you would potentially need to set up here. And in terms of the region, in my case, I'm deploying into EU West 1. And you can see just then that it went off and actually picked the list of ECS clusters that I have available. And I've just got the single cluster here, which is default cluster. And by the way, as I run through this, I will be referencing various AWS resources that are all described in this article, which I've got open here. So if you want to follow along with this, then I suggest you go and check out this article and that will tell you how to create things like the ECS cluster that I've got here. So there is one advanced option that I need to set and that is tunnel connection through, and this is the value. So I just click on advanced and for the top level configuration, I've got a whole load of other settings and I'm interested in this one. <coughs> And all this is, is basically to say that when the Jenkins agent needs to talk to its master, it's gonna talk over this specific DNS record, which is actually a private DNS record, which means that the Jenkins traffic won't go outside of my private VPC. And now we can jump into the ECS agent template configuration and the label that I'm going to use here, I'll copy from this table is ECS and the template name is Jenkins Agent. And these are identifiers that will be used when you start your Jenkins Agent. And in terms of the Docker image that gets used, the default is Jenkins slash inbound agent. So Jenkins provide you out of the box a Docker image that you can use straight away. And in my case, I prefer to use the Alpine version because it's slightly smaller. And it means that when I start my Jenkins agents, they, they just start up that little bit quicker. And the launch type needs to be Fargate. So launch type here is Fargate, which means that we don't have to provision any underlying AWS resources. AWS take care of that for us. And soft memory is 2048 and CPU is 1024. So 2048 and 1024. And I found that these values are reasonable to run a very simple Jenkins job. Obviously, if you're running something that requires a lot of processing power, like perhaps compilation, then you might want to increase these values. And in terms of subnets, I need to paste in the two private subnet IDs that I have separated by a comma. And this is where I'm gonna go into the AWS console. And I'm gonna to go to services, VPC. And under subnets here, I've got two private subnets, which I'm going to use for this example. And I'm just gonna copy the IDs and paste them in here. Now I need to provide a security group for the Jenkins agents. 
And as you probably know, security groups control the inbound and outbound network access. And I've already got a security group set up and it's called Jenkins Agent Security Group. And I just need to grab the ID of that security group by going to services, EC2, security groups, and I'll just search for that name. And in terms of what you need for this security group, well, you don't really need any inbound access to your Jenkins slave. And you can leave the outbound as it is because by default, when you create a security group, it has outbound access to everything. So it's pretty well an empty security group. And I'm just going to copy the ID and paste it in here. And I need to click advanced. Under advanced, I'm going to provide a task execution role. And the reason I want to provide a custom execution role is that I actually want this task to be logging out to CloudWatch. And in order to do that, you need to provide an execution role, which provides the access to be able to push logs to CloudWatch. And I've already created this. So I just need to search for Jenkins execution role and I'll go to services, IAM, roles, I'll search for the role and then I'm going to copy the ARN of that role and paste it in here. The next thing I need is to set the logging driver of AWS logs to say that the logs from the Docker container will get logged to AWS. And there's a few configuration values I need to set. And these are the last configs I need to set here. The AWS logs group, the region, which in my case is EU West one. And lastly, this logs stream prefix. So the log stream that gets created is going to have a prefix of Jenkins agents so that it's easily recognizable. So that's all the configuration we need. It is important that you get these configuration values right because one small mistake can lead to your Jenkins agent not starting. So let's just click save here. Still with me? I hope so because we're nearly there now and the best bit is yet to come. With this configuration, all we need to do is run a job which has a label of ECS and Jenkins will automatically run it on a slave agent. So all I need to do now is create a job and I'm going to call this job slave agent demo. And I'm going to create a pipeline job because I think that's probably the type of job that most people are creating these, de these days. And I'm going to use the pipeline script that is provided in this article. And if you're following along, you can copy this as well. And I'm just going to paste it in here. And you can see here that in the agent section of this pipeline script, we're saying we need to run on an agent with label ECS. And that corresponds exactly with the Jenkins agent template configuration that we just set up. And that's how it's going to pick up that configuration. So I'm just going to save this. And here's the moment of truth. I'm going to click build now and watch the output here. And by the way, if you're a bit impatient like me, you can go into AWS and go to services, elastic container service, and you can click on your cluster and click on tasks. And you can keep an eye on if your agent is starting up. So we can actually see here that we've got a task that's in the status of provisioning. So it's just starting up and it's our ECS cloud Jenkins agent. So it looks like things are working here. And if I refresh, it's now running. So let's keep an eye on this job. And when Jenkins says Jenkins doesn't have label ECS, that's just its way of saying it's going to go and create that for you. Awesome. So we've got the expected output here. We've got a, we've got a little message, hello from Jenkins slave. So that shows us that this job has run on the Jenkins slave. And if we go back into ECS and hit refresh, you can see that that container has now stopped. So it's very short lived just during the duration of our job. And in terms of troubleshooting, if you run this and it gets stuck in any way, well, there's a couple of things you can try. Firstly, you can go into Jenkins, manage Jenkins. And if you go down here to system log and all Jenkins logs, normally if you scroll to the bottom here, you'll see quite a useful message in my experience of kind of what's gone wrong. The other thing you can look at is in ECS, you can go to stopped containers and you may get a container that for some reason had to exit and you can click on that 
task and go to logs and you can kind of see any specific error message that you might have here and that might help you to debug what the problem is. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions, just comment below and I'll help out as best I can. And to go through this example in your own time, follow the link in the description to the accompanying article.